The DEA 360 Strategy Program was created in 2015 and introduced to cities where the opioid crisis has impacted the local community. Today, Mike Ferguson, head of the DEA Tampa, and Cindy Grant, who we welcome back with loving arms after unfortunately losing her son with a battle to addiction, joins us to discuss the importance of this program. Great to have you, Cindy. We Thank love you. when you're Great here. So nice to meet you, Mike. Thank you. Let's kind of dive in. What is this program all about, DEA 360? Uh, DEA 360 is a three-pronged approach. One, it is the continued enforcement efforts that we take all across the nation, uh, so we don't change what we're doing. Number two is the education of physicians, pharmacists, doctors, and prescribers of prescription medication. It's part of our program on the regulatory side to educate those doctors on what red flags are mm -hmm. to help minimize the abuse. And third, most importantly, is the community outreach portion. As we sit here today with Ms. Grant, uh, one of the things DEA did was wanted to partner with our local community coalitions to get the message out of the dangers of drug abuse. And, and it is a big message that everybody needs to be discussing. And Cindy, I wanna bring you in on this conversation. Uh, again, we're so sorry for your loss. And I'm assuming a parent to deal with that kind of loss can just sit back and, and be mad and not wanna do anything. Why is this a program that you wanted to get behind? It's a good program because um, it brings to the community lots of tools that they can use to raise awareness, to reduce stigma, and provide support to other families who are going through this. I think the, the changing the stigma is such a big one, and you it and is. I have chatted about that before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people think it's just an individual problem, but it is a community. And getting back to the three-tiered approach or the three-pronged approach, as you put it, let's talk first about law enforcement. What changes, or not necessarily changes, but what things need to be different from the way maybe it's been handled in the past to now as the opioid crisis increases, have you had to make? Uh, as as Organizations evolve, uh, we have to adapt as well. So mm -hmm. you saw the pearl pill prescription abuse rise in the early 2000s mm -hmm. to the late 2012. Uh, in that same time frame, the Mexican organizations have evolved as well and they've developed fentanyl analogs mm -hmm. and they are investing in those analogs to bring this poison to our streets just as they do methamphetamine, cocaine, and heroin. You talked about the medical approach, which obviously having doctors and medical personnel being able to recognize, that's gotta be crucial. Why was that something though that you wanted to include in this DEA 360 program? Uh, DEA saw the need to educate our doctors. Uh, we do have specific groups designed to, and they're referred to as tactical diversion squads that do investigate practitioners, doctors, but it's more to uh, identify those people that are practicing outside the scope of normal medicine. Obviously, we all have a hope that, you know, there's no other parent that has to, has to lose a child to addiction. How do you hope this program helps? Let's try to, you know, fast forward into the future and having this program being on the ground. How do you hope this helps families and, of course, those suffering from addiction? Uh, there's multiple reasons why this will happen. Uh, we have training going on today, youth leadership training. We're taking 100 kids, bring them into Kaiser University, and we're teaching them how to be the leaders of the next generation and how to get that message out about drug abuse and the dangers that come from it. Uh, I think we will see a uh, reduction throughout the Tampa Bay area just based on the ability to bring those leaders in and have them go out to the community in the future. You know, we kind of touched on it there when I was reading the intro. We were talking, though, that Tampa is a, a handful of cities, one of 20 cities, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, that people really need to take note. And maybe someone's watching at home and they're like, oh, that's not my family. But it is a community situation that we all need to have conversations about. Would you agree, Cindy? Definitely. We need to open up those communications and open up those lines um, to get people help they need mm -hmm. when they need it and to not be afraid to go and get that help. I think that's and then as, as we start talking about it across the communities and as these kids go and speak with their peers, hopefully it'll raise awareness and more people will come forward. I like because at some point something's got to change. Exactly. Something's got to be done. And I'm so I'm so proud and excited to hear that the DEA has really taken taken this bull by the horns and trying to make a change Thank in you. this epidemic. We want to go ahead and share more information. If you'd like to learn about this and of course be involved with this DEA 360 and be part of the apparent coaching, there's also training courses involved. We didn't get to touch on that, unfortunately, but that's the website there so you can get more information and hopefully we can talk more about this too because I think this is so important. And thank you Thank for you. joining us. Thank you.